the first question, just to set the stage and the context is, um, what are the basic de development stages across different hardware companies? And how about Keita, you tell us from your experience at Alloy, what you see? Sure. Um, so, you know, the, the great thing about making physical products is uh, it, there are some similarities uh, for making anything that's a physical good that you can touch, feel, um, be delighted by, and all the rest of it. Uh, and what's what I love is when I was working for a startup accelerator, you get to see the really early stages of product development, of prototyping, of bringing ideas, um, potentially IP all the way through. Um, and then during my days at Dragon, it was sort of seeing the very tail end of, of some of that. Like, how do you move into stable production for hundreds of thousands of units per year or millions of units per year? So this is kind of a very high level uh, overview, but generally, you know, you start at sort of the idea stage, the conception stage. Um, at Alloy, we use the term um, sort of for evaluation. Um, so a phase one might sort of be, let's evaluate where the idea is. Let's help you define what the requirements are. Often that in the documentation uh, takes the form of, you know, a product requirements docu document. Um, the business side counterpoint to that will be, you might need a marketing requirements document um, and, and that type of thing. Uh, once you sort of move into prototyping stage, uh, this is obviously like a very iterative cycle. Um, at Highway One, we were fond of using um, a phrase that was sort of like the rule of sevens. And I'm not quite sure why we picked seven. Um, you know, eight, eight's a luckier number in, in, in sort of the Far East. So maybe we'll use eight. But the whole point is fail early, fail often, fail where it's not as costly, um, both to your, your actual dollars um, and also your time, uh, and where the failures aren't sort of catastrophic. So the, the rule of sevens or, or eights. Um, was, you know, it takes sort of seven seconds to sketch something out on a whiteboard. Um, it might take, you know, seven minutes to mold something using modeling clay. Uh, it might take seven hours or longer to do a 3D print. Um, and then when you're actually doing things like sending um, prototypes out that might need to be machined, for example, um, could take seven days. Um, and then if you're actually doing for plastics, like injection molding, um, uh, like maybe seven weeks. I mean, I think rough rule of thumb was like 40 business days for cutting hard steel tools. Uh, but anyway, the point is, uh, it's obviously a lot easier to fail by doing seven second drawings and really trying to refine the idea down um, and, and make it as, uh, you know, high fidelity as you can at each stage before moving on. Um, so at Alloy, we actually do something pretty interesting. Um, you guys have probably heard the terms proof of concept prototype. Um, at Alloy, we sort of break it down in that evaluation stage to what are the highest risk subsystems. Um, and sometimes that actually could be the highest risk is integrating the, the whole subsystems, you know, if it's like a very large physical product, for example. And the point then is during sort of the, um, you know, phase two or the proof of concept stage, uh, it's a lot faster to just prototype each of those subsystems um, rather than trying to spend a lot of time integrating all the subsystems together. Unless, of course, that ends up being, you know, a, a, um, a tough touch point. So usually, you know, doing those um, subsystem prototypes in a proof of concept stage uh, is how Alloy approaches things. And then sort of Alloy's phase three would be what we call a proof of design. Um, you may, in other terminology, have heard this called an integrated works like, looks like prototype. If you're a startup, oftentimes to prove to investors to raise your next round that your idea is viable and that you've made progress, you need to have that integrated works like looks like prototype so that there is something they can not just see and say, ooh, that looks very nice, like a looks like um, model, but have it work and function as well so that it's sort of that experiential model as well. Um, and obviously I know Kyle will talk a lot later about uh, each of these stages has increasing complexity around the documentation that is required. Um, but once you've got that integrated looks like works like prototype, um, there is some more sort of documentation to to be done. Um, it's the nuts and bolts of making sure that everything is set up for starting the production process. I would say CM selection usually happens at this point. Um, hopefully you're running an, a robust RFQ so that you, um, you know, it, it's a competitive process that will help you find the best manufacturing partner or partners. 
Um, and then you sort of, uh, once you've got that production ready prototype, you start to enter what's called NPI or new product introduction, which has some pretty distinct phases typically. I think there are multiple terminologies, but the most common one you may hear is EVT, DVT, and PVT. Um, and that's sort of a, a, a process to ramp up at each stage. Again, you're ironing out different factors and facets of your product, of your design, of the engineering. Um, and that whole process of NPI ramp, if you will, is designed to get to stable mass production where you know you are regularly making 10,000 units a week or whatever it is.